Hello everyone, this is Chris Morosky, and this is a short video on breastfeeding complications. The goals and objectives of this video are to review some of the common infectious and non-infectious complications of breastfeeding, to discuss the risk factors for and management of these conditions, and to describe the impact that these complications can have on both the lactating mother and the nursing infant. There are obvious health benefits for both the mother and the baby for breastfeeding. The American Academy of Pediatricians recommend that moms breastfeed exclusively for the first six months of the baby's life and continue breastfeeding while introducing complementary foods up to one year of life or longer. There are some common minor complications of breastfeeding. Unfortunately, major complications are more rare. We're going to review some of these minor and major complications in this video. Breast engorgement usually um, happens uh, about three to seven days following birth, um, and this is more likely in first-time mothers. Um, with the increase in blood supply to the breast, the accumulation of milk in the breast and swelling, there is increased pain and tissue damage. The cause of breast engorgement is not getting enough of the breast milk out. Um, this happens with um, delays in breastfeeding, um, poor infant latch, um, and uh, not feeding on infant cues, but trying to stick to more of a schedule. Breast engorgement can be treated with regular breastfeeding, um, breast pumping, or hand expression. Um, women can also gently massage the breast and use warm compresses prior to breastfeeding, and then use cool compresses and Tylenol in between the breastfeedings. Low milk supply is a major cause of stopping breastfeeding. Women will commonly feel like they are not producing enough milk, uh, due to irrit irritability of the baby um, or feeling their breasts aren't as engorged as they continue to breastfeed um, and most of the time their milk supply actually is normal. Um, low milk supply is caused by a decreased emptying of the breast milk. When this happens there are increased amounts of feedback inhibitor of lactation. This peptide can build up in the breast and then this actually inhibits lactation. The causes here are poor latch, breast engorgement, um, use of formula and pacifiers, um, and then trying to stick to a timed uh, feeding schedule rather than feeding when the baby requests to be fed. Um, there's also changes in infant growth and feeding patterns. Babies will tend to cluster feed and eat while they're growing rapidly. Sometimes they grow a little more slowly um, and they'll um, eat differently. Mothers will sometimes believe that this is a supply problem when really it's just a change in the baby's growth and feeding. The treatment is to increase skin-to-skin -skin time with the mother, um, to also increase breastfeeding um, with pumping right after. If you look to the right, you can see here's a, a nice schedule for uh, a mother who wants to try to increase her milk supply, which combines nursing and pumping throughout the day. Um, any type of increased nipple stimulation, nipple massage um, is helpful. Treating nipple pain is also very important. There are some medications called galactagogues, uh, the one most commonly known and studied, which is proven to be effective, is domperidone. It is a selective dopamine D2 receptor antagonist. Also, metoclopramide can be used, but this is off-label. Um, there are some herbal therapies, including fenugreek and milk thistle, sometimes called blessed milk thistle. It's not entirely sure in studies how these medications work. There may be some placebo effect, but you will commonly see these being prescribed and taken by women to increase their low milk supply. On the other end of things is oversupply of milk. Now, for a lot of mothers who have low milk supply, this seems like a good problem to have, but actually it's not. Um, the reason it's not is that there's an increased risk for engorgement, an increased risk for blocked ducts, and mastitis. Also, what ends up happening in these situations is that there is a lot more fore milk being produced rather than hind milk. Fore milk is more watery, it's higher in lactose, and it's lower in fat as compared to hind milk, which is thicker and has higher fat. So what ends up happening with these moms who are making a lot more quantity of milk is that the baby's getting more fore milk and therefore the baby is less satisfied, it's more fussy, it's wanting to feed more often, and surprisingly, these babies actually can have trouble gaining weight because they're not getting that higher fat, thicker hind milk. The way to treat this is to um, breastfeed on only one breast for a two hour block period of time whenever the baby wants to feed so that you can get to the hind milk in that breast. Um, the other option is to pump some of the fore milk prior to breastfeeding the infant. 
Um, and if you're sticking with um, one breast during that two hour block period, the other contralateral breast may become more engorged um, and hand expression and pumping of the contralateral breast can help if the mom's having too much discomfort while trying to stay with that one breast for the baby during that two hour block period. Overactive milk letdown is the overly forceful ejection of breast milk. Um, this can cause difficulty for the baby feeding because too much breast milk is pushed into the mouth. The babies can be fussy, um, they can ingest a lot of air, and then they can be very colicky. This is caused by a very strong milk letdown reflex, um, and as well as increased sensitivity of the myoepithelial cells to oxytocin. The treatment here is to use hand expression or pumping prior to the infant latching. Um, also, gentle compression on either side of the nipple can decrease some of the flow of the breast milk right after the baby is latched. Um, one of the things that's very helpful is to avoid engorgement and to have regular milk emptying. And there are certain positions to hold the baby that reduce gravity to the nipple. And these would include side lying or the football hold. Nipple pain is common. Um, it can uh, happen really in the first few days uh, after initiating breastfeeding, but this really should resolve by five to seven days. If a woman has nipple pain a week out from delivery, um, then really you need to look into why this is happening. The most common cause is um, poor latch um, of the baby, um, latching directly onto the nipple or even biting down on the nipple rather than the areola, an improper release where the baby sort of pulled off the breast um, and the nipple is stretched and then sort of snaps back. Um, this can all lead to cracking, bleeding, cellulitis, and mastitis. Um, and the treatment really is to focus on first a good latch. So to make sure that the baby has the whole nipple in the back of their mouth and that the sort of suckling of the gums is on the areola rather than the nipple. Um, also massaging a little bit of breast milk at the end of the feeding into the nipple can help. And then lanolin cream, which can be um, obtained over the counter, can be used to hydrate the nipple and keep it protected. And this is done following feeding. The cream is then wiped off before the next feeding. Also, it's important to allow the nipple to be completely dry following feeding after rubbing in the breast milk or some lanolin cream and to change breast pads regularly. Women will want to avoid tight-fitting bras, tight-fitting clothes, and also avoid using any harsh soaps or fragrances on the breast or the nipple. A blocked milk duct will present as a tender or sore lump in the breast. Um, and it's important to make sure that there's no signs of an infection because that's a whole different thing. Um, but they'll have no redness or really um, fever or anything like that, just a tender sore lump in the breast. What's happened here is that there's a blockage of the lactiferous duct with milk building up behind it. Uh, the treatment here is actually to keep the breast milk flowing through the lactiferous duct and hopefully undo that blockage. Um, moms will want to frequently feed on the involved breast and also some gentle massage from behind the mass pushing towards the nipple can push the breast milk out and hopefully open up that blockage. Women can also use heat and it's important to avoid here an underwire or tight fitting bra. One of the other um, long term consequences of these block ducts is something called a galactoseal which is a retention cyst filled with milk. Um, this can be during breastfeeding and this can also happen after breastfeeding. Um, these can sometimes resolve on their own, um, but if they're persistent and tender, they uh, either can be aspirated with a fine needle or completely excised, um, as these pockets of breast milk can predispose to secondary infection or even rupture. Mastitis is an infection of the breast. Um, this presents with fever, pain, and redness. It usually happens in the first two to three weeks postpartum and is associated with milk stasis. The uh, most common bacterial agents here that cause mastitis are Staphylococcus species, Streptococcus species, and E. coli. Um, the treatment is to continue breastfeeding, similar to the blocked milk duct, to pull that um, breast milk out from the breast. Um, breastfeeding and pumping is important. The baby still can drink this milk. It is okay for the baby even though there is an infection. The baby's stomach acid will kill <clears throat> the infection in the breast milk. A massage, again, towards the nipple is helpful to keep that breast milk coming out. And then these patients are often started on broad-spectrum antibiotics like dicloxacillin unless they have an allergy. Um, and these patients need to be followed up closely to make sure that they don't develop an abscess. Breast abscess is a rare complication of breastfeeding, but it can be pretty serious. It presents in 0.5% of breastfeeding mothers. 
It will present with a painful swelling and persistent systemic symptoms of fever and chills and body aches despite antibiotics. On physical exam, there can either be a palpable sort of squishy fluctuant mass, um, and this can be confirmed on ultrasound with a hypochoic collection of fluid in the breast tissue. Uh, once a breast abscess is developed, this needs to be treated with uh, aspiration or incision and drainage as antibiotics alone are not sufficient. That said, the antibiotics are important to help treat uh, any overlying cellulitis and to treat any systemic symptoms. Fungal infection of the breast is also common. Um, this can happen and present with uh, sore nipples despite a good latch. It's always something to think about when a woman has continued sore nipples despite a good latch. Uh, on physical exam, she may have flaky, shiny, itchy nipples or cracked nipples, and she can even have these small little blisters like you see in the photograph. This is caused by Canada species, and Canada loves warm and wet environments. Breast milk also has a lot of sugar, and Canada loves that. Um, the treatment here is a topical antifungal cream that is put on in between the breastfeedings and uh, wiped away so the baby can breastfeed. These creams are safe for the baby. Um, for these women, they're going to want to thoroughly wash all of their clothes, including their bras and their shirts, and to make sure that the pumping supplies are clean because the candida can stick around on all this stuff. And it's important to have a new, clean, and dry bra daily. And really, the important thing to do here is to keep the breast dry. Inverted, flat, or enlarged nipples can be an issue for infant feeding. Um, this can either be something that's congenital, especially the enlarged nipples, um, or secondary due to engorgement. So women can have totally normal nipples and then with breast engorgement have them become more flat or even become inverted. Um, nipple massage, nipple stimulation, and stretching can draw the nipple out. Um, with just a little bit of exposure of the nipple, infants can often latch on the areola um, with a good effect and be able to breastfeed. There are these small suction devices and nipple shields that can help pull the nipple out more. Um, these moms also sometimes need to use hand expression and pumping to get milk flowing and get the milk out of the nipple. Um, and then with that little bit of milk there, the infant is more likely to latch on. Finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about Raynaud's of the nipple. Um, this is an uncommon condition, um, but it can be seen. Um, it's caused by vasospasm uh, leading to decreased blood supply to the nipple. Um, this causes very intense nipple pain with the latch. Um, and then in between breastfeeding, you're going to see nipple blanching like you see in the picture. Um, this is either caused by early trauma to the nipple from initiating breastfeeding, so things like um, nipple cracks and bleeding, um, or again, a candida infection can predispose to Raynaud's of the nipple. This is treated with uh, nipple massage, um, avoiding cold, um, and sometimes nifedipine, which can be used for Raynaud's of the hand, is also helpful with Raynaud's of the nipple. All right, everybody. Well, that's about it. Um, you can see we covered um, some of the common infectious and non-infectious complications of breastfeeding. We discussed the risk factors for management of these conditions, and we described the impact that these complications can have on both a lactating mother and the nursing infant. I hope you found this video educational. Good luck with your studies, and we'll see you in class. Thank you.